Hi, and welcome back to a new five-part series of Cooking with Nick. I'm Nick Rizzo, and during this session, I will show you with a little pre-planning how to produce a four-course delicious and healthy meal in under an hour. So sit back, relax, grab a pencil and paper to take notes so you can make this meal at home. Okay, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of Asian flavors. Um, we're going to have roasted red pepper soup with some crumbled blue cheese and parsley on top, which is a soup that is simple, uh, one of the simplest soups you'll ever make. Uh, and it's one that stores well in your freezer. So you can always pull it out, finish the soup. You know, don't add, you won't add the cream, but the, at the end you could add the cream and finish it. So it keeps nice in your freezer. We're going to do Asian flavored chicken packets. These are little uh, bundles of foil that are filled with all kinds of vegetables, hoisin sauce, a little ginger. Uh, the sauce only has three ingredients in it, so it's real easy. You mix it with the vegetables, put the chicken on it, uh, and I'll show you a couple of shortcuts using that chicken. Okay, so, uh, so you can have them ready in about 20, 25 minutes. Okay, uh, we're going to do a citrus and green salad. This is going to be a salad with mixed spr uh, spring mix greens and orange and grapefruit slices and a little bit of red onion. And we're going to make a, a, a Dijon mustard dressing for that. Okay, another one that's real simple to make because you could buy everything. You could buy the orange slices, you could buy the grapefruit sections, you buy everything already made and you just put it together at the last minute. Okay, then for dessert, we're going to do an almond chai ice cream. Okay, and I'll show you how to make that. I, I like doing different kinds of desserts using ice cream, okay, because they're quick, simple. You get vanilla ice cream, and you can make so many different flavors with it that it's crazy. And I'll show you using coffee how to make this, uh, or uh, the chai tea, how to make this uh, flavored ice cream. And that's what we're going to start with because I want to make sure we get it in the, in the freezer so it sets up a little bit before we eat. So if you have a, if you have a, uh, a KitchenAid, this is the easiest way to do it, okay? Uh, luckily, the school bought one, so I'm going to use it. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, a, a brick of ice cream. And, and if you go to the store this week, buy one, get one free, Breyer's ice cream, okay? So uh, the thing I did discover, though, is when you buy it, this is only one and a half quarts. They no longer make two quarts. <laughs> So you're paying the same price, but you're getting a half a quart less, okay? So I had to go through and readjust how to get this going. So you take the ice cream, and the, the easiest, if you're going to do this kind of thing, the easiest way to get the whole block of ice cream out is to just cut it down the sides. Okay, you just open it and it's in. Okay? Instead of standing there with the scoop trying to get it out and you know fighting with it all the time. Okay, you if you leave it in your refrigerator for a little bit, it'll it'll soften up. So that's gonna be you just wanna chunk it up a little bit so when we put it in the the mixer. It doesn't go flying all over, but it will anyway. So, you know, you need to have one of those mixers with the cover. <laughs> I was making this this afternoon, and it was kind of like flying all over the kitchen. But, okay, so we have that. Now what we're going to add is, this is international flavor chai, okay? You could make, use this same recipe with different flavored coffees and teas, okay? So this is chai. This has got cinnamon flavor to it. If you like chai tea, chai latte, I mean, you'll, you'll like this. So what you have to do is you take some cream, okay? You heat it up a little bit, and then you, you mix this in, about six teaspoons, you know. So I did that before I came because you have to let it cool a little bit, you know, otherwise it'll melt the ice cream right away. So that's what I have in here. So it's this with some cream. In your recipe, you'll see it says that. And we're going to mix that together. And some cinnamon. Okay, 
And, this, and there's cinnamon already in this. This is cinnamon flavored. But we're just going to add a little more because we just like, I like the cinnamon taste, okay? Plus cinnamon's healthy for you, okay? So, so we're just going to add some in here. Okay, then I'm going to add this in. This is about a cup. You could smell that right away. You could smell that cinnamon. Okay, so that's, if you've never seen this on the shelf, you can look at that. Okay, I'm going to throw in some chopped almonds. You, it says on there to use slivered almonds, but I didn't have any, so I'm using chopped almonds, okay? So, put a little of those in there. And we're going to save a little because we're going to sprinkle some on the top. Okay, so we got that all together. There's no handle on this. I'm going like this with the handle. <laughs> I hope it goes in there. Okay. So there we go. Get ready. It's coming toward you. Okay. No, not too bad. It doesn't take very long. Just want to make sure that the flavors are incorporated. Okay. That's it. Come on, Jackie. I know you want to lick this. Come here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Pretend you're home. It's good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this in. What you can do is you can put this, if, you, if you're not going to use it right away, and you want to make it and have it like during the weekend or whatever, uh, party coming up, put it, put it in a plastic container. Or if you're careful and you don't want to, you know, ruin the cardboard container like I do with the scissors, you could put it right back in the container, stick it back in your freezer. But what we're going to do is we're going to put it into little cups so it'll be easy to, this thing has no handle, I can't believe it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's hard. So, just going to pop it in there. We should be able to get about six or seven from that one and a half quart container. It depends. Well, you can get a lot if you use smaller cups, okay? Okay. And there's, there's about enough for about two more servings in here. I'm just going to stick it in a little container. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of chopped almonds on top. Okay, and just to decorate it a little bit, I'm going to put a, a maraschino cherry on top, just, just to make it look good. Okay. Plus, then it makes me think I'm having a Manhattan. <laughs> you know? Okay. You take those stems out. Or if you wanted to, you could put the whole thing on there with the stem. Jeez. Okay, put it on top. I have the backup in the freezer that I made this afternoon. You should have seen me running up here because it was warm oh. in my car. <laughs> I know, I was doing like 50. My wife, my wife was yelling. She goes, you're going to get a ticket. I said, I'll just tell them I have ice cream in the car. She goes, oh, that'll, that'll work. Okay, so these are going to go in. There we go. Dessert's done. Five minutes. It's like Chinese. Five, ten minutes. You know when you call? <laughs> I shouldn't say that on camera. Oh, okay, I'm going to find a little container and we'll put that in. Unless you, you want to finish that, Jackie? What are you doing? <laughs> Okay, let me get this out of the way. Now what we're going to do now is I'm going to do the packets, the chicken packets with the vegetables and get those in the oven. Then I'm going to make uh, the soup, okay, which doesn't take very long, and then the salad. So we'll go from there. Okay. okay, what you're going to need for this is you need some heavy foil. So we're back to number one now. I have the oven preheating.
And I, I said I would, I would show you how to make this simpler. What I did with the chicken is I, I took the chicken and I cut it up into little bite-sized pieces. Okay, so you can see about like about this size. And I par cooked them. Okay, so what you do is you, you cut them in pieces, put them on a baking sheet, drizzle them with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper, and put them in a 350 oven for about maybe 15 minutes or so. Okay, they're not cooked all the way through. Okay, it's just par cooked. So when you put them in the packets, you could use the same method for when you make a chicken casserole. Okay, so when you, if you go to get chicken and it's all on sale, and you don't know what to, you know, you don't know what, you clean it up and you don't know what to do with 25 pieces of chicken. Cut them up, par cook them, stick them in little packets like your little baggies and put them in your freezer. You want to make a casserole? So you, you cook the pasta, vegetables, whatever you want, put the chicken in, and then in 20 minutes in your oven and it's cooked. Okay, so it saves you all that time of cleaning the chicken. Just do it all at once and get it out of the way. So, so we have that. Okay, so we have, I, what I did this afternoon is I cut up all the vegetables. Okay, so in here is all the vegetables. You see there are snow peas, carrots, baby carrots, uh, uh, water chestnuts, again, we use that, uh, broccoli, some celery, some mushrooms, and some green onions. Okay, so I put it all in in a container like this. And then the sauce is only three ingredients. The sauce is hoisin sauce, which is like a Chinese barbecue sauce, uh, some uh, ginger that we're going to grate up in there, and uh, a little garlic. Okay, so we're going to mix that all together. So let me get that stuff. So hoisin sauce is, I mean, you find it right in, you know, right in the regular store by the uh, Chinese food. So, a little container. So I just want to mix this together. So, and uh, it's probably maybe about. Uh, like a third of a cup that's in here, you know, so. Okay, so we got that. And this stuff's expensive, so I'm going to add, just put a drop of water, shake it, so we get the rest of it out. Hmm? What, what's the basis of that sauce? I'm not familiar. What is it? It's, uh, it's, it's like a, a soy sauce. It's like a, a, a boiled down, heavy soy sauce. And it's got, let's see what it's got in here. Uh, distilled vinegar, onions, peppers, spices. It's basically red chili pepper, uh, soybeans. It's like a soy curd, you know, and then it's got some uh, uh, soy sauce in it. So we got that. I have some garlic. And I'm going to, if you wanted to, you could use... Uh, you know, the garlic that, you know, comes in a jar, you know, the minced garlic. I, I don't particularly like that because, but I just want to get the skins off this. And I'm going to grate it. I'm going to uh, shred it right into the, right into the sauce. Okay. Let me find my grater. Just take a little handheld grater and. Shred it right in. Okay. So there, we have all that in there. Get this cleaned up. Now we're going to put. We're going to do the same thing with the ginger. Now ginger, you know, when you go to the store and buy, like ginger, you know, it comes in a great big root, you know, so you always try to pick the smallest piece because you never know what you're going to do with it. But uh, what you can do with it is, is peel it, put it in a baggie, stick it in your freezer, okay? Then it'll keep in your freezer for quite a while. And then when you take it out of the freezer and you, you're going to use it in a recipe, shred it while it's frozen, okay? And then you don't have all those little fibrous strings and all that stuff. But it, it'll keep for quite a while as long as you keep it in your freezer. I don't have any in my freezer right now. People always say, I want to know what your freezer looks like. You're always putting stuff in your freezer. 
I probably have some in there. It's probably in the back somewhere that I don't know where it is. Okay, so you just want to take, you know, the skin off there, and then we're just going to shred it in here. It's very, very fibrous when you shred it. So if it's frozen, you, you avoid that. OK, so you want maybe about, about a couple of tablespoon or so. OK, get that in there. OK, so that's basically what our sauce is going to be. Just mix that all together. Okay, now we're going to add it right to our vegetables. So this is total do-ahead. You could do this like the night before, the day before, a couple of days, because the vegetables are just going to sit there and not do anything. Okay, let's put that on. This is great if you want to do it outside, because instead of putting it in your oven, you could put it on your grill. You know, just make sure when you put it on your grill, you put it on a, a baking pan, you know, so it, it doesn't burn from underneath. Okay. You could, all, you could do this, uh, the ones I have back here, I did this morning. Okay. So it, it, just leave them in your refrigerator. When you're ready to go, you know, in 20 minutes, you, you'll have dinner ready. I'm also going to show you, once I get this put together and in the oven, I'm going to show you how uh, if you go to a real fancy restaurant, they can do this in parchment paper. Okay, so uh, I'll show you how to fold the parchment paper if, in case you want to do that. You know. I, was, I was doing this recipe for the uh, Mrs. Redmond's high school culinary class, and we did half the kids did parchment paper and half did foil, so we were showing them how to do that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it takes a while, it's easy. I mean, it's not hard, but you know, you need a little patience, you know, which high school kids don't have. So. <laughs> Okay, so let me make a little room here. So we're going to take our foil sheets, and I'm going to make six to add to the rest that we have back there. So we're going to take some of the vegetables and just put it right in the middle. Try to get like, you know, make sure you get like the carrots and stuff on each one and but I usually have them laid out all over the kitchen, and I, I divided it all up. So then we're going to take the three or four pieces of chicken, put those right in the middle. Remember, these are par, par cooked. So, okay. And just take the packet and just fold it over and fold the sides up. And make sure you fold them up so that they're not under because you don't want it to leak. Okay, so fold it up. Don't make it real tight on top because you want it to steam. Okay, so there's one. This is also a good way to get kids to eat vegetables or adults who don't eat vegetables, you know. Of course, the hoisin sauce is like a barbecue sauce. So it's, it's a little bit, it's kind of sweet. Oh, a little, little bugger popped out there. Okay, so there's two. And you just keep going. This is, this is a nice little project for kids to do. You can get them on an assembly line, you know. Again, we're going to put the chicken on. And fold it up. I tried doing this one time with the pre-cut foil sheets, you know, the ones that come in that pop-up box. They're too thin. You know, they, they tend to rip a lot, so I would not recommend using those. Of course, I, you know, I was trying to find a shortcut. You know, I was trying to <laughs> it takes so long to cut this foil. <laughs> okay, we got two more to go, and then we'll get them in the oven. And I, the, the vegetables that I suggested, are, you know, you could put whatever kind of vegetables you want in there. You want to put celery in there. You want to put, you know, whatever, green peppers. These are just the vegetables that I like. So snow peas is something people usually don't have. 
you know, so it's kind of a nice way to introduce people to a different, a different kind of vegetable. Okay. It smells good right now. It smells delicious. Okay, so let me put these on the pan. If you're buying baking pans, make sure you buy like heavy duty uh, aluminum pans like this. They clean up really easily, they maintain the heat, uh, and they don't like when you put them in the oven and go boing, you know. So it's, it's kind of a nice, it's worth the, the investment. Okay, so I'm going to pop these in the oven. I'm going to put one in there and then I have two back here. These are the ones I made this afternoon. I didn't have them on full blast because I'm standing here, <laughs> you know, it's like, <sighs> okay, so that's it. So we have that done. Let me show you how to use the parchment paper. When you get parchment paper, I buy the sheets already pre-cut uh, that fit that, those pans right there, okay? So you could, you could get them. I see right now they sell them in Walmart, which of all places, but uh, I order them from the restaurant supply. So, uh, but get them, you can get them this way, you don't have to worry. You know when you pull it off the roll and then you got to put it over the counter and flatten it out, you know, so that these come flat, okay? So you get them like that. What you want to do with the par piece of parchment paper is fold it in half, then you want to pretend you're in kindergarten to make a little heart, okay? So, and then what you do is you take your filling, okay? Well, I have some left here, let's... Let's pretend we do. I don't have any chicken left, but we'll put some filling in it. Okay? This is like we're making a mud pie. Okay? So we got the filling in there. Okay? So you fold it over. And you start on the heart part, the middle part. And what you want to do is crimp it. You want to fold it over, fold it, fold it. Just keep folding it until you go all the way around. Okay, then when you get to the end, you take this piece and fold it under. Okay? So, you, you know, I did it really fast. You got to, you know, fold it down. It doesn't take long. And then what you do is put this on your baking sheet, take a little, a little brush with a little bit of olive oil, vegetable oil, and brush the top. And what that does is it'll make it brown on top, otherwise it really won't brown. But you don't worry about it burning. It won't burn. Okay? But it, you get a nice little brown on the top, then you take it off. You cut an X in the top, you open it up on the plate, you know, and this is what you pay $10 for, the parchment paper, <laughs> you know. So they charge you a lot of money when you get this stuff. You, you could use the same method, you could use those same things and put fish in there. Get like a nice piece of uh, uh, haddock or a nice piece of uh, sea bass or whatever, whatever kind of fish you like. Okay, you put it in there with those vegetables, you could do the same thing. The same thing with raw shrimp. You put it in there and you have shrimp instead of the chicken. Okay, so you, you could mix it up. You could put chicken and shrimp. Okay, you could do, you know, surf and turf. <laughs> surf and barnyard, whatever you want to, you know. So you, can, so you can do that. So there, that's the way to do that. Okay, so we got that done. So those are in the oven. Now I'm going to start the, I'm going to start the soup. Okay. So what we want to do is to just get, I have it on about medium, medium high. Let me clean up a little bit here. Okay. This soup sounds like it's complicated, but it's not. Okay. Let me turn my cutting board around. Okay, so I have some, some roasted peppers that we're going to use. And... I made, I made the puree this afternoon, oh, and I'll, I'll show you what that means. When we do the soup, we're going to saute some onions and mushrooms and what else is in there? A little thyme and whatever. This does not have the cream in it yet, 
okay? It's a cream soup. So when you make this, before you put the cream in, you could take it just like this, stick it in your freezer, okay? Then if you want the soup, take it out, and when you go heat it up, just like you heat regular soup, and then take it off the heat and then add the cream, okay? So this is another total do-ahead, okay? So I'm going to take uh, half of this onion. This is, this is we're going to work with the soup pot, and we're going to work with the food processor, because we're going to process these peppers. I got, I found these at Walmart, which I usually don't go grocery shopping at Walmart. I just have, I had to go there for uh, an appointment, and I was walking around waiting, you know. So uh, they had these big jars, they're like three bucks. Big jars of roasted peppers. What size is that? Hmm? What size is that? What size is this? This jar is 24 ounces. Usually they come in like a little eight ounce jar, they're expensive. The other place to go get those little small jars is the Dollar Tree. They're all a buck. They have roasted peppers for a buck. That's where I usually get them. <laughs> you know? I find all kinds of discoveries in that store, I'll tell you. My wife goes, I never saw anybody spend three hours in the Dollar Tree. <laughs> I said, well, you know, you've got to look. Okay, so I'm going to get, I'm going to dice this onion up. This is like half an onion. Okay, I'm going to put some olive oil in the bottom of the soup pot, just enough to you know, get the bottom coated a little bit. What we want to do is we want to sweat the vegetables a little bit. Oh, here they are. I have some mushrooms. About a, about a couple mushrooms. This, this was a big thing, so just you could put them in a hole if you want. Or these, these mushrooms are large, so I'm just going to chop them a little bit. Give me a stir. I got everything in there, Carolyn. What do I got to put in? Oregano, chicken broth. Okay. I have thyme, oregano, some chicken broth, and, hmm? What do I got? Chicken broth, oregano, garlic, thyme. Oh, parsley, got that got sprinkles on top. Okay. So I'm going to put in some thyme. This is dry thyme. And I'm going to put this in with these vegetables because I want, I want it to cook a little bit so it releases the oils. Okay? Because it's dry. Okay? Remember, dry, the dry is stronger than fresh, so be careful how you use that. Some oregano. And once you put that in there, you could start to smell it. Okay, so what you want to do is, is to have the onions sweat a little bit. Let me get this out of the way. And I have some cayenne pepper. If you, this is up to you. If you, like, if you like it with a little kick in it, put it in. You can either use cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes. The, the cayenne pepper is a little bit stronger, you know, but it gives you, the cayenne gives you a little tickle in the back of your throat when you're eating it, not like the red pepper flakes, which you feel on your tongue. This you feel like in the back of your throat. So I'm going to put a sprinkle because, you know, it'll wake you up. You'll have the soup and you get a little tired watching me. So you get... Okay, so we got that in there. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to, the onions are pretty good, I'm going to add the chicken broth. And then we're going to process the peppers. I love these little tabs, they never work. Okay, so we got that in. What we're going to basically do is bring that up, add the peppers to it. Let me make some room over here. I'm going to put this in your purse. Let me take this off. <laughs> Let me clean this up. Move that over. I think I got this down now. I think I figured out how to work it. 
So what you're going to do is take the jar of peppers, and uh, I, I had two, but I think I'm going to use one because I have I have this. You know, we'll use that. So. So what we want to do is just drain it a little bit. And then just put them in. On there, otherwise you're gonna, <laughs> gonna look like Christmas. <laughs> okay, that's basically what you want. That's a, just a puree. I even figured out how this comes out. <laughs> Last week I couldn't get it out. I'm going, what the heck? <laughs> Okay, so we have this, so we're just going to add this to the, to the pot. Okay, so we get that going. Bring that up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'll add some of this to bring this up. Because then at the end, what we're going to do, we're going to add uh, half and half and turn it into a cream soup. But you still have a little bit of the chunks from the onions and the mushrooms, okay? So basically everything is cooked, you know, so. Okay. Let that come up to temperature. Let me add a, how hungry are you guys? <laughs> I'll have a little, little bit more of this. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You could take it home. You know. <laughs> so. Okay, let me clean up a little bit over here. Wait for that to come up to temperature. So that's done. I mean, we basically can bring that up to temperature and then add the cream. Or the, you could add cream half and half. You want to? I'm going to add. A, I'm going to add. Uh, I had a little bit some cream left over from when I made the the latte, so I'm going to use some of the heavy cream in there. Okay, so because this is not diet workshop, if you decided, you know, <laughs> but you're not going to eat the whole pot. So I mean, so you get a little bit, right? Oh, okay. Got to watch some of these people. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to start on the salad. So we have desserts done, dinner's in the oven, soup's, soup's on, and then, uh, then we're going to make the salad. Again, another very easy salad to make. I'm going to use our, our small salad bowl. <laughs> hey, you laughed. The last time I made salad in here, there was none left. <laughs> so. Okay, so I have in here, we have uh, spring mix. And again, just go buy it already cleaned and, you know. You can buy it, you know, out of the, the bins, you know, you got to do that. Then you got to take it home, you got to wash it, you got to dry it, yeah. For another 50 cents, just buy it already done. Everybody's got to have a job. So somebody's, you, you do that, you're taking somebody's job away. Okay. So we got to, let's see what this says on here. This, this whole thing serves three people. <laughs> you figure that one out. It says servings per container, three and a half. It must be somebody likes a lot of salad. <laughs> That in there, that's not enough. 
And I'll put about about half of this in there, and we'll see how far that goes. My wife does not like iceberg lettuce, so she won't, she won't eat that. She likes all this grass and weeds, <laughs> you know, the stuff that I mow over in my yard, she eats. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I a little more. Okay, so we get that in. And then we're going to put some red onion in here. Uh, the red onion is, is, is a lot milder than, you know, the regular, so. Again, when you cut the onion, cut through the root, okay? And it's easier to peel. So then you have, you know, this, this whole part, so. Then when you go to slice it, it doesn't go flying all over your board. And you have that little piece, just throw it away. If, if you really uh, get an onion that's really, really strong, take some cold water, soak it in cold water, and let it for about five minutes, and it'll take that tart, that, that, that real strong oniony flavor out. Okay, so get that in. I'm going to add some fruit. And it says there's an orange. Did you, did you ever take the orange and try to section it? You know, you have to go in between the white and so you're there for like three days before you get two oranges. You know, well, you know I have a lot of patience for that. So I just go to the store and I buy the segmented oranges and grapefruits. So you're all set. So just drain them a little bit. And we're going to add them in here. I like salads with citrus in it. What's what? What store did you get that at? I got this right in quality. I mean tops. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Right where the fruit is. Where the mm -hmm. Well, you can get the, the section grapefruits in, in the can, you know, where the canned vegetables are. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is a lot fresher. I like this. So. Okay, so we had that in there. This is about, I think it was like $4 or something. You know, so you figured... You know, I charge twenty dollars an hour, so I'm not going to stand it. It's cheap, cheaper to buy it like this. So there you go. Okay, so we have our salad ingredients, and the soup is coming to a nice simmer. Let that simmer for a little bit. Now we're going to make the dressing. Um, again, the dressing has lots of stuff in it, but it's easy. Okay, so we have Dijon mustard. I'm going to be, um, you'll notice in the recipe that it only says to add black pepper. That's because I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce, okay? The Worcestershire sauce is kind of salty, so you really don't want a whole lot of that uh, salt in there. And has white vermouth. If you don't have white vermouth, you could use white wine, okay? And if you don't want to use white wine, then go have a different salad. Don't make this, okay? <laughs> So, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in, let's see, maybe if I get on the right recipe, I'd be able to see what it is. But <laughs> made all this just by hand. So there you go. Okay, so we're going to put some olive oil. And again, I'm just going to use a jar to shake it up. And, um, you know. The recipe works, believe me. I'm just, <laughs> trust me. Okay. Has some lemon juice. And again, I know it, if, you, if you don't have lemon juice, just use some of the juice that came out of that. Okay. Some black pepper. This is coarse ground black pepper. Or you can use fresh ground, whichever you want to use. Okay, I'm going to add a little 
pepper flakes just to give it a little kick. Just a few. Okay, some vermouth or white wine. Save some for my martini. Okay, a little bit of paprika. Okay, a little dash of Worcestershire. How am I doing? Okay. <laughs> okay, a little bit of that. I should have just the Dijon left, right? The Dijon mustard. The Dijon mustard is made with white wine, so you can get different flavors. I think this is this is made with Chardonnay. Okay, so you can get different flavors of that mustard. And what the mustard does is helps all of the oil and the the things uh, cling together. It makes like a, an emulsion. Okay, that's why they use mustard in there, because it, then it won't separate. Plus, it gives a nice little taste. Okay. Okay. Going to whisk it. Okay. Smells good. Now, this is not going to be a strong, strong dressing because you have all the citrus in there. So you want that citrus flavor to come through. Okay, so. This is also a good dressing if you want to marinate fish or if you want to put it on fish as a, as a, after you cook the fish and then you want to drizzle it over the top. Okay, this, this works with that too. Okay, so get that in there. Okay, the soup is just about ready. In about another minute, I'm going to turn that off. Okay, in the meantime, what you're going to do is you can have salad. Okay? Oh, you know what I forgot to put in there? You didn't tell me to put that garlic. Is that garlic in there? No. Okay, good. God, I put garlic in. I put garlic in so many things, it's like, yeah, it goes in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carolyn, I apologize. I didn't want to yell at you. <laughs> okay, there you go. I'm going to move this over here. You can use uh, whatever you want, plates. There's some small plates here, forks, napkins. Go for it. I'll clean up a little bit. I'm going to get the soup ready, and then finish that. Then you'll have soup, and then dinner should be ready. Look what time it is. We're almost done. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the uh, cream and half and half to the soup. I'm going to chop up some parsley because what you want to do is, is uh, sprinkle a little of the chopped parsley on top of the soup and then a little bit of the crumbled cheese. You could use these blue cheese, gorgonzola, feta cheese. You know, just remember that that, that cheese is salty. Okay, so be careful when you, what, what you do with that. Okay. I'm just going to chop up some of this. I'll put it in the bowl and put it over there. When you get your soup, you can just serve yourself. Okay, this is just a regular Italian parsley. And what this does is this gives it a nice little fresh taste because you're using like canned tomato peppers and you know. I tried one of those little things that has like little uh, wheels on it. You're supposed to roll it over the herbs, you know, to go like this. I get it. You know, I felt like I was in a gym. You know? <laughs> get out of here. You know that it was going this way and this way. <laughs> I was actually at a food demonstration. The guy's watching me use this thing. He says, oh, you have to try this thing, but I said, okay. You use it. <laughs> okay, so there's a parsley. I always try to figure out a neat way to do that. There's no neat way to cut parsley 
or spinach. It just ends up all over the floor, the counter. I don't care what you do with it. it there's no way to, to chop it easily. <laughs> so if it calls for, for spinach, I will always use frozen spinach <laughs> if it, you know, unless it says you have to absolutely use fresh spinach. <laughs> okay. Put that going. Okay, here's the soup. I'm going to add... I'm going to add a combination of, I had some heavy cream left from when I did the latte stuff for the ice cream. So why not put it in there, okay? You drizzle it in. And you put, it, you put in enough to, so you get the consistency that you want. I like fat consistency. <laughs> so. <laughs> now remember, if you're going to make this and you want to save that puree, you put that part in your freezer, and then you heat it up, and then you add the cream in there. Okay. Hey, could you ever serve that cold? Serve it cold? Absolutely. I guess you can. You know, I guess you could serve it cold. I, I haven't, but you can take some home, leave it in your car overnight, and then have it for breakfast. <laughs> you, you call me and let me know what it tastes like. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of half and half just to... just because I have it here. <laughs> okay, that's ready. Okay, I'm going to take the salad bowl away. I'm going to move the soup over there. Okay. Okay, here's the ladle. Oops. Soup. Spoons. Blue cheese. And here's the parsley. And I'll leave the salt and pepper over here in case you want to add salt and pepper. Taste it first, though. You know, I hate to force you to have more salt than you really need. Okay, so here you go. Part two. Enjoy. Okay, soup was good. Okay, we have, I'm going to take the uh, packets out and uh, I'll set them up over on the stove area over there. Just take your packet, put it on your plate and get a fork and go for it. Now the chicken's in little bite-sized pieces so you really won't have to spend a whole, you won't have to cut it or whatever, you shouldn't have to anyway. So I'll get those out and set them up over there. Uh, again, I have the oven off, you know, so I just let them sit in there to, to keep warm until you're ready to eat. So. No rush, just it's only, we've got plenty of time. So <laughs> I'll have my dessert while you're eating that. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take those out. And there's one. I'm gonna put these over here for you. And when you open them, be careful because, you know, it's going to steam when it opens. Just take, don't, try not to open the sides when you open this. Just try to open it from the top. <laughs> You know, and then most of the juice and everything will stay right inside the packet. Okay. So again, there you go, another total do-ahead meal. You, know, you could have that ready and do it in the morning and you're all set to go. So there you go. Now you have to get up again and eat. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so those were good. No, uh, yeah, everybody's taking care of their own dishes. <laughs> Not too much to wash on that one. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to bring out dessert. Uh, I'll, I'll set it up over here and get the, the rest of the stuff. There's one more packet over there that if you want to take to Jeanette. <laughs> it's right up there. There's one more up there. So uh, 
I'll bring out dessert. Okay, these are, these are the ones we just made. So they're, you know, it's, it's like I like it. It's like custard, uh -huh. you know. So, so those are those. And these are the ones I made this afternoon, <laughs> this morning. So my little transporting. In a, if you transport them, uh, something like ice cream wrapped in newspaper or in, a, in cardboard, it keeps it fairly cool. So these are a little harder. I'll put them on a tray. I should be able to get 12 on this because that's how I put them in my freezer. So. <laughs> okay, here you go. Get some spoons. There you go. Let me know how you like this. Well, that was our class for this session, and I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something along the way. If you could not attend the class and are interested in the recipes, you can email me at nrizzo at roadrunner.com. I would like to thank Chicago Lake Central School, Mrs. Amy Redman, all my class participants, and my wife, Kathy, for her support in my many crazy endeavors. Thank you.